everyone, welcome to Mr. Yu's Reviews. Today I'm reviewing the highly anticipated film, Spider-Man No Way Home. This film follows Peter Parker, aka Spider-Man, after the events of Spider-Man uh, Far From Home, where his identity was revealed to the world, and has really caused a lot of problems for him and the people around him. So, Peter Parker uh, decides to go to Doctor Strange to cook up a spell that could solve this problem. And when the spell goes wrong, all these different villains from the different universes, different worlds, um, come into their universe. And this is where the real problem of the film begins. Um, and before I you know, delve deep into this review, I should mention, of course, this is a non-spoiler review, as you've seen in the title. But I will talk about things that were shown explicitly um, in, in the trailers, in the marketing of this film. So if you've decided to kind of go into the film blind, it might be better to watch the film first and then watch this review. But I will not be revealing anything that was not shown in trailers or anything like that. You're safe with me. So here we go. First of all, let's talk about the cast and characters of this film. And once again, Tom Holland proves that he was made for this role uh, as Peter Parker slash Spider-Man. And you know, if you've seen his past films as, as Spider-Man, you, you, you understand that he understands both sides to this role. To be a little more fun as Spider-Man and a little more kind of down to earth and emotional as Peter Parker. But now given that people in the film know that they're one and the same, he, Holland really goes into that emotional side um, of this role and he is the strongest he's ever been as this character and he was just spectacular um, and even you know Zendaya as MJ and uh, Jacob Allen as Ned they were also very strong here and just that trio the combination and the camaraderie between all of them was just so nice to see once again um, and it was stronger than ever in this film a lot of the actors really give their most in this film because the relationships between all the characters are the strongest they've ever been as well. So it makes sense that there's more of an emotional attachment to each other. But what I was most excited to see in this film were the villains and the main trio um, being uh, Willem Dafoe as Green Goblin, Alfred Molina as Doc Ock, and Jamie Foxx as Electro. Now with Alfred Molina and Jamie Foxx, they easily just go back to their roles. And it was just like seeing their characters really taken out from the films that we've seen in the past. And that if, you, if you look behind me, you can see I own all of them, all the Spider-Man films. So it was really nice just seeing them get back into their roles. But Willem Dafoe especially, you know, as Green Goblin, he was the strongest performance here because, you know, he understands the duality of this role. When he needs to be more menacing, boy, does he go menacing and really crazy in this role. He just goes for it. But then when he needs to be maybe less menacing, you know, he makes the audience feel for his character a little bit as, you know, Norman Osborn. So just overall, all the actors in this film um, really gave it their all. And it's just a film of strong performances. Um, given that everybody just goes for it. Now let's move on to the more technical aspects of this film and the directing by uh, John Watts is once again strong and is probably you know at its best out of this whole trilogy, the homecoming trilogy they call it. And not because you know the action scenes were directed better or because the more kind of emotional, more slow, low scenes were directed better. It's mainly because there was so much for this director to manage and to bring together in this film. And he did it so well, um, bringing it on screen. And I can only imagine just what was going through his head. Like, he was probably thinking, how do we transition from here to here in a good way? How are we gonna, you know, get this shot, get everybody we want, um, with, like all these different villains together? Like, how, how should I direct it? He was probably just thinking about those things. And he did quite a good job. Um, I really liked his directing here. And, you know, the visual effects are also um, quite good. Though I gotta say, you know, after a while, 
you, you understand when the visual effects are you know not real it's very understandable in this film they didn't necessarily look like too strong too realistic um, but you know there was a good amount of it so I really got to give them props because they did do a good job um, but by far you know the music by Michael Giacchino um, you know really hit home in this film. He, the music really knew when to just be very strong during certain scenes and then kind of on the background and be maybe more kind of like upbeat or more exciting during the more stressful scenes in this film. It really all came together well um, with the technical aspects. Also let's talk about the story slash screenplay of this film because this is the aspect that I have a lot of thoughts on. Now the strongest aspect of this story is the fact that you know although there is a lot of nods to past films through you know through these villains and there's a lot of fan service um, just through those characters that we're seeing again on screen you know seeing Doc Ock, seeing Green Goblin again it's fun but you know even with that the film doesn't take away from the main story we've been following from you know just the past two films in this trilogy it kind of adds more to it actually and it strengthens it through the use of just these nods and the, the, all of this fan service so you know in many you know you, you watch many films that are going to refer to things from the past and it does usually take away from the main story but that was not the case here which i really appreciated seeing because leaving the theater that was what i really left with i was left with just thinking about how these characters grew from just the past two films and in this film and it was it was really exciting and awesome and very well put together I mean also with the large number of villains here um, you know large number than usual you, know, you, you usually focus on one or two villains in a in a film but this one had more than that you know there was a nice balance between everyone which I, I really liked seeing and it was just exciting as well um, my biggest gripe with the film, though, is the fact that, you know, by the end of the film, you're kind of left with certain questions. Um, you're kind of left with thinking, well, if this thing occurred, then does that mean, you know, this occurred? And it wasn't really explained well, mostly because I feel like the filmmakers are just going to say that, you know, yeah, this thing occurred because... You know, there's the use of the multiverse and the use of magic by Doctor Strange. Um, and I'm trying to be vague here. Um, and, you know, those are two ideas that us as an audience and, you know, the viewers don't necessarily have too much of a knowledge on. So it's kind of an easy thing to answer certain questions with. So you're kind of left assuming that those ideas that we don't know too much about are the answers to those questions. So that was my biggest gripe with the film. You know, leaving the theater, I was just thinking, you know, this big thing occurred, but then does that mean that this other thing happened? You know, I, I was left just thinking about that. I'm, I'm really trying not to spoil anything. I'm being very vague here. Um, but you know, even with that big gripe, I found this film to be fun exciting, emotional, and just satisfying, even with all the hype that was given to this film. Um, it really did a lot for the, all the characters that we've been following, and it felt less of an MCU movie and more of just a true Spider-Man movie. And of course, Spider-Man is a part of the MCU. This film is a part of that universe, but it found a way to really focus on the characters instead of trying to call back to other films in the MCU, which was another thing I appreciated. Um, and I really recommend it just for that. So I give Spider-Man No Way Home an A-. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. And as always, don't forget your popcorn. Until next time, from Mr. You to you, stay tuned.